In this video, we'll talk about highway driving. That's coming right up. Hey, it's Sean from Zula Driving School and let's get right into talking about highway driving. Okay, highway driving. So I'll break this down into three steps. The first step would be entering the highway and then we'll talk about what you do when you're on the highway and we'll talk about what to do when you're exiting the highway. So entering the highway is going to look something like this where you have your merge lane and this is the highway itself. And so how I like to think about this is we'll break this down into three sections. So the first section is called zone of acceleration. And in this zone, you're going 50 kilometers an hour in the city and you just need to pick up your pace and get up to 80 kilometers an hour. So you're going from 50 kilometers an hour to 80 kilometers an hour. And that's all you need to focus on. The next zone is the zone of observation. And in this zone, you are going to not only look for a safe gap in traffic to enter the highway, but you're also going to let people on the highway know that you're coming. So you're going to signal, you're going to check your rear view mirror to see who's, who else is in the lane with you. So I'm gonna say signal rear view mirror. We're going to check our left side mirror here. So we'll say side mirror. And finally, you're going to shoulder check as you're reaching the end of your zone of observation to see that if there's a car that is right in your blind spot that you're not seeing in your mirror. Because remember, your mirror tells you about dangers that are two or three seconds away. It doesn't tell you about immediate dangers, which are half a second away. Oops. This should be here. So two, three seconds away. But your shoulder check will tell you about immediate dangers. So half a second away. Finally, you get into the merge zone. And this is essentially a lane change. And you're just going to merge with the traffic. Now, some things to take into account when you're merging is, number one, trust that the engineers have designed this merge lane long enough for you to be able to merge safely. So there's no need for you to get up to speed and then try to cut the white line here to try to merge. Wait until you've got the dotted lines and then merge. And you don't wanna merge necessarily right at the beginning of the dotted line, you can use up as much of the merge lane as you need to. Now, it might be the case that you speed up from 50 to 80 kilometers an hour. Then when you get up here, you realize, oh, the traffic is backed up on the highway. At that point, you would have to slow back down and merge with the traffic in alternating pattern, also known as zipper merging. So let's say this is you. Let's say there's a car in front of you in the merge lane and you see that car merge in between these two cars. So you wait until you're about roughly where they were and you would merge between these two cars. So essentially you're zipper merging. Now, one thing to note though, is that, you know, the reason we go up to 80 kilometers an hour is so that we make it easier for other people to let us in as well because when you're approaching here, you've got your signal on, these cars will see you coming. They're willing to take their foot off the accelerator, possibly a little bit, to let you in to merge. But they are not going to necessarily stop for you. They most likely will not stop for you. And they're probably not going to apply the brake to slow down too much to let you in. That's why it's important to get up to speed. I tell my students this all the time, and then usually the first time they try to merge onto the highway, they get up to 80 and then when they're doing their shoulder checks, they slow down and I tell them, 
Listen, if this drops down to 70 kilometers an hour, now that safe gap that you thought you had between this car and where you're merging, it's shrinking, right? Because you're not going as fast as they are. They're willing to maybe ease off the accelerator, but they're definitely not gonna go down to 60 kilometers an hour for you to be able to merge at 65. So keep that in mind. Now, when you're on the highway, the things that change are your eye lead time. So let's say increase your eye lead time, which means look as far down the road as you possibly can see, right? You don't wanna be looking at the car in front of you. You wanna see what's happening around that corner or that curb or like six or seven cars ahead. Because if something was to happen, because you're going faster, you need more time to react. And by looking further down the road, that gives you that opportunity. Now, highways will have intersections. And at an intersection, or when you're approaching a traffic signal controlled intersection, you're going to see a sign like this. It will have a traffic light sign in the middle, and then it will have these lights like this. And it will say, prepare to stop. And when you see these two lights blinking, the yellow lights blinking, you need to prepare to stop. Now it might be the case that as you're approaching that intersection, you can see the green light and this light just went on. You still should, if you're seeing the sign and it's blinking at you, start slowing down and preparing to stop because that light will change on you. So don't take the word of the traffic light at this point, take this word of this sign here. Now, when you're traveling on the highway, you might have multiple lanes going all in the same direction. You might be two lanes going in the same direction or, or three lanes, whatever the case may be. In BC, they've changed the laws in 2015. Everyone has to be in the rightmost lane. And you can't go into this lane and treat it as a fast lane, if you will. This lane here is called the travel lane. And this lane here is called the passing lane. Now notice how I didn't say slow lane and fast lane because that's not what they are. If you're traveling in this lane and the car in front of you is traveling below the speed limit and you think that it's safe, you can change over and use the passing lane to pass them. And once you've passed them, you need to get back into the rightmost lane. The reasons you would use the passing lane are if you're passing a slower vehicle, someone going the speed limit is not considered a slow vehicle. If you see an emergency vehicle, such as police, ambulance, fire truck, tow truck, road maintenance, um, something with flashing lights, white, yellow, blue, red flashing lights on the side of the road, you need to, if it's possible and if it's safe, as you're approaching, change your lane and give them one lane distance from yourself. So when you're passing emergency vehicle parked on the side and flashing lights. The other reason you would use this lane is if your exit is on the left-hand side and it's coming up, so you would have to get on. So I'll say exiting on the left. The other reason you would use it is if you have vehicles coming up for a merge and you think that you've got enough room or if it's safe for you to do a lane change, you could get into the left lane, let these guys merge easier and then when it's time, come back in. So allow for merging vehicles. You don't have to always move over when you have merging vehicles. You, you, like I said, you could uh, take your foot off the accelerator just a bit to make it easier for them to merge. Or if you think it's safe, you can change over, let these guys merge, and then get in back into that lane. Now, the only time you can be in the passing lane and travel in the passing lane is if traffic is backed up and traffic is moving below 50 kilometers an hour. Once the speed picks back up above 50 kilometers an hour, then you have to go back into the, the rightmost lane and travel in that lane. When you're exiting the highway, 
it's very important that you maintain your speed until all four wheels have left the highway. So don't start slowing down here just because you want to exit. Get into this exit lane and when all four wheels have left, I'm going to say slow down here, not here, here. And that's important because if the car behind you is you know, you start slowing down, they're not expecting you to slow down and you're being unpredictable on the road. So wait until you're here, then take your foot off the accelerator and slow back down to your regular speed. Also, when you leave the highway, you're gonna be velocitized. So everything's gonna feel a little bit slower to you because you're now used to the fast paced moving environment. So make sure that you don't end up speeding uh, once you're back into the city. Going back to people merging, let's say you are traveling and you see a car coming up. When you see them in their merge lane, this is a time to figure out what it is that you want to do. Where are they going to merge? If they're going at a pretty good speed and it looks like they've got their speed up to 80 and they're going to merge comfortably, then so be it. But if you're coming up and you're both kind of beside each other, this is probably the time to take your foot off the accelerator a little bit and let them get the head start to get in there. You don't want to be playing the, the chicken game where you're both coming up at the same time and they're kind of running out of options. So either figure out if they're really moving slowly here, then uh, maintain your speed and just pass them so that they can merge behind you. But if you see that they're coming up, don't block their path. Start maybe take your foot off the accelerator, let them get a few kilometers an hour faster than you so you can so they can merge comfortably. Now, when you're on the highway, the following distance from this car in front of you should be about three to four seconds minimum. I would recommend making that five to six seconds because there is no maximum following distance. So the further away you are, if something happens to this car, you will have time to react. Three to four seconds is pretty much the bare minimum that you want to be from that car. If you're not sure how to calculate this, we have another video that talks about following distance and we talk about how you can figure out how far away you are from a car using a fixed object on the side of the road. So I hope this video has been useful to you. If you liked it, feel free to comment, like or subscribe to our channel on YouTube. In addition, we offer an online video training course where we show you real footage of us driving on the highway and the things that we look out for. So be sure to check that out on our website at www.zula.ca. Now it's one thing for me to stand here and talk to you about highway driving. It's another to get out there with uh, your driving instructor or your co-ed driver and practice for yourself. I hope to see you in another video soon.